seems legit. Hello, my legitimates. Welcome back. Today we are doing the new Riptide pattern from Needle and Anchor. Uh, it is super cute. It's got all these fun little pockets on the front. It's got hidden strap connectors. I love how she's done the zipper in this. It's a new thing. We haven't, I've never done it in a video before. We've also got a welt pocket inside. So that was really fun to do. Uh, so if you'd like to see how to make all of this, please stay tuned. Alrighty, let's get started. I have it all cut out and prepped and fabulous. Um, I was really excited about making this. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with all my pockets um, and sew them together. So because there are so many pockets, I have only interfaced one piece. So the piece that you will see as opposed to the lining piece, I have interfaced. Uh, so we're going to put right sides together and then I'm going to put the non-interface side face down because I always put the lighter one face down so the feed dogs will pull it evenly. So we're going to stitch and back stitch. And then back stitch. So that's the first one. Then I'm going to grab another one. Now these aren't necessarily in actual order of how I'm going to place them. I'm just grabbing them all. So again, right sides together. So this, I know this is the middle pocket because of the fabric I picked. So then we're going to stitch and back stitch and do the next one. You want to make sure they all line up nicely. And then we're going to grab, so this is the front one. Again, I can tell because I use my sparkle vinyl. Now this one might actually need some clips because sparkle vinyl can get a bit slippery. It's evil like that. We don't want it slipping out of the way. So, stitch, back stitch. And I'm just gonna chain stitch all of these. I love a good chain stitching. It saves time and thread. Okay. Oh, my machine's touching that, making it vibrate. So now I'm just gonna chop off these two. Grab the zigzag scissors, which I have still not gotten my husband to sharpen. I forgot. I was not tip top at 100% yesterday. Uh, and it just escaped my mind. I was overtired yesterday. So this video was going to be done yesterday, um, but I didn't sleep very well. I was overtired and a little bit delusional. Um, so I would like half do things and then just forget to kind of finish what I was doing. Like I'd make the dog's food and then forgot to put the rest of it back in the fridge. I just left it on the bench. There was other things too, but that's just one example. And I imagine I probably would have made a lot of mistakes making this bag yesterday. Which I mean potentially could have been a teachable moment, but... Also, would have made the video like three times as long with all my unpicking. Okay, so now we flip this over and you can iron them if you want to. I'm just going to put some clips. They are going to be very cute. Then I'm just going to top stitch along these. Now you can do as much or as little top stitching as you want. It is always a personal preference. I'm doing quarter inch today. I don't know why, I just felt like it. Back stitch. Then we're going to chop this one off because that way we still continue the chain stitching momentum. Over we go, pinch, clip it if you like. Uh, if I was to iron this, you iron it from this side. It can still be ironed. 
Um, this would also be really cute with an embroidery design. I did toy with the idea. And technically, I still have time. Until I join all the pockets together, I do technically always still have time to change my mind. But I kind of just like the sparkle. Um, if I was to enter, if I was going to, in, not engrave, oh my gosh, embroider, why do they all start with E? If I was going to embroider this, I would um, iron onto the back of it some interfacing. You could use medium woven or um, hefty, which is the Vylene 1050F. I just like to call it hefty because it's easier to say. Which is a non-woven, by the way. It's a non-woven interfacing, um, but I really like it for bags. People like what they like. I happen to like that. All right, last pocket. Now this one I did, I've got like a plan going on with these pockets, which you saw at the start of the video and I always forget that. Um, Cause I wanted, I wanted three different layers and then the actual main panel is another different fabric. So I didn't want the main panel and the, one of the pockets to touch being the same fabric. So I had like a whole, thought process with this. I mean, you don't have to think that hard about it. I just did when I was designing it. You could quite happily do all the pockets the same colour. Or just like rotate one versus the other. So, these now go one, two. Now all these little taggy bits here line up. So we go one and two and three, like so. So you get this cool like momentum with the pockets. And these are just mainly just there to help you kind of line them up. So you could even just clip them from there to there. You also want to make sure that all the lining, so there's a little bit of a lump there. I can feel it. So you want to make sure that these all sit flat and evenly. Uh, we will be cutting these off, so it doesn't matter if you didn't cut those bits perfectly, they are literally just to help you line them up. Like that. Beautiful. So now I'm just going to top stitch all of those together. And I'm not going to stitch that bit, I'm just going to stitch straight down and ignore it because we will cut it off eventually. Round we go. The other reason I didn't interface both sides is that is a lot of layers. You can hear my machine chugging through them, which is fine. But it's just something to think about. If you're on a domestic machine, you might definitely want to skip some and or all of your interfacing. Okay, so that's my pockets now, which looks fabulous. Now would be your last chance to change your mind and embroider the front. By the way, you would just unpick that and then flap it open. I'm not changing my mind. I'm just pointing out that there are different stages during a thing that you can change your mind. So these are going to go on here. Um, so it does actually have like the line up pieces on here. But before we do that, we need the other bit that I'm looking for. This one I did interface. So essentially what we're doing is we're adding this around here, like so. It's giving us an edge, hiding all those raw edges, also keeping all of this bulk out of the side seam. Very cool idea. So we're gonna fold this in half and find the center of the inside. We don't care about the center of the outside, although you can probably find both. If that made you feel better, we can do both. Right, so this is going to sit like this, so we're going to flip this, I'm going to chop that one off, 
I am. It's in my way. So bye bye to that one. Also, unrelated note, if you wanted to, you could actually just skip some of the pockets and not all of them and have different amounts on the outside. Uh, so you get more options if you think of it like that. Ow. My dog gave me a cat scratch today while we were high-fiving. It's my own fault. I asked him to high-five me and forgot he had long claws. Then we're going to start from the centre. Work our way out and around. Now if you, another really cool idea for this bag, and again, I have a million ideas and never time to do them all. But what you could do is you could have this piece as vinyl and have these all as um, just fabric and then do the main panels as vinyl and that gives it kind of an extra boost without needing interfacing and makes it kind of not necessarily weatherproof, but the vinyl is usually like you can wipe it down. I always like that. Do, 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 do. I am wondering if I am meant to clip that onto there. I actually think I might be because that needs to stitch up to there. See how that's gonna work out? Yes. In the meantime, I'm gonna take that one off though because it is easier to do by itself. Then we're gonna add it on. That's the end. All right, so we're working around, clipping it down. Another thing you could do, because I should have read the pattern and I didn't, but I can see two ways to do this. So you could stitch this on and then just tuck under that raw edge for when you top stitch it. Option one. Option two is attach it and sew it all together at once. There is always more than one way to make almost any bag. Almost. Some of them, I mean, some of them you can do and they're really fiddly and not worth it. Um, so I can make any bag with or without binding. Uh, just sometimes it becomes a lot more tricky to do so. So, we have options. We can stick this on like so. Which again, these help line up, even though I chopped off the bottom one, don't worry about that. All right, so I can stitch this onto here and then we flip it back and top stitch it and it'll all line up beautifully. Or I could top stitch just this and then fold it back and top stitch it down. Options. I think I like the idea of stitching into everything just quietly. Now again, this main pattern piece, which I'm just again making sure there are no things, can just, you can line it all up. So you can make little marks on the side where these bits have to go and it all lines up. I'm actually going to do it this way because we still need to put strap connectors on there. So I'm going to just start here and I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And yes, as always, I have a song stuck in my head. I'm sorry if I start humming it. My brain can't help itself sometimes. this slowly you can tend generally do it kind of all at once like that and then I get to the end and backstage. Oh how cool is that? Ta-da! Right, moving on to this. I do have this pattern piece here for a reason. I need to chop out these little squares, which I probably should have done before the camera, I know. Uh, because they're even, I can actually just chop one and then flip the pattern over. Like so. Then we also need our, and I can't show you this pattern piece because it's got a masking on it. But 
we need this piece and what I haven't done yet is draw all of these on so the way she's written the pattern is this square perfectly lines up where it needs to go like this and then the squares and rectangles will match up which is super cool so I need to cut out this exact rectangle so that it will all match up and I can just because it's symmetrical I can just flip this one over also just while I'm doing this uh, when cutting your pockets make sure because they are asymmetrical, please make sure that you cut them correctly. It would be very easy to not do that. So we're gonna just lay this over the top and because they are pretty much the exact size, we just draw the rectangle. Line it up, draw the rectangle. Um, if you got acrylic templates made of this, having that hole would be super handy. You just lay it over, draw it, cut it out, happy days. Ah, right, easy enough. Got pen all over that, doesn't even matter. So now we take this and you can either measure it or you can just kind of line this up so that the hole pokes out where the hole is. See, look at that. I don't know, you probably can't see it. That is exactly where that needs to be. And so now we can just stitch. I'm just gonna stitch the two top and bottom lines. You can stitch the whole way around, of course. I feel like it's gonna work out better for me if I don't. Bend it over, snip in the middle. It's much like a zipper pocket. And then I'm actually just going to triangle the edges straight out. Now these I will need to iron. So I am going to repeat that process with the other side and the back piece. Uh, so we're gonna do all four and then I'm just gonna push these through and iron them so that they are beautiful and flat on the other side. Because I don't think double sided tape is really gonna help me this time around. It needs a good iron because it is all fabric. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back. Okay. All of these are now ironed flat. So now we need to grab our strap connectors. Now these are my glitter vinyl and because it is so thin, I have interfaced it with medium woven. It's just going to give it a little bit of added stability uh, so it won't die, which is obviously a good thing. We don't want it to break off a strap. Um, so when, when your vinyl's thin, you very easily can just iron interfacing onto the back. It won't harm it. Just don't put your iron on the vinyl surface. Always put it on the back. So the woven isn't necessarily making it thicker, it's just making it stronger. Um, I could have used hefty, but because it's a non-woven, it would also make this a lot thicker and harder to bend. And that's not what I was looking for. Pull these off. And then squish them down into the center. And then I'm up to a three and three quarter stitch length and I'm just gonna stitch both sides. Now we're not gonna see the raw edges of these, so I don't need to worry about that. All right, you can make these out of completely fabric if you wanted to. I'm just trying to bring a bit of sparkle. So again, we squish it together and then push down. These are a great way to practice that method. I do find that by doing this, it is a lot quicker. 
and it's all about efficiency. It's not necessarily about being the fastest sewer, but if you can cut down time in spaces, it always makes you feel a bit better. Next one. So I made sure that I pressed this down really, really well. Um, and I also shot it with a, um, some steam just to make sure that the interfacing wasn't going to lift later on. Sometimes interfacing can do that, especially if it's not just the cotton that you're sticking it to. Um, and I have personally found that shooting it with steam is quite effective. Also gets out any um, wrinkles that may be in the vinyl. So mm, I'd say 99% of all vinyls can in fact be ironed from the back. Um, depending on how thick it is and what type it is will depend on how hot and how long you hold the iron on it. I never change my iron settings for making bags, I just hold it on less. The only time I will change my iron settings is if I'm using like a silk or something that will literally melt and disintegrate at high temperatures. Uh, which is very rare and usually clothing. So now that we've got all four of those, I'm going to grab my rectangles. Now I was going through my stash of hardware, whoops, and I discovered that I had four skinny rectangles left over. I no longer stock these, uh, but I'm also not going to throw them out because that's wasteful. So we will be needing those in a second. So the first thing we're going to do, I always like to find roughly where half is. Um, and then also to see how much we're going to have kind of overhanging. And then I'm going to grab one of my main panels and I'm going to push this into the hole. Like so. Now again, I can now see where that bend was. And so I want to put it just above the hole. And then we're going to stitch through the layer of the this and just above where the hole is. So if you need to mark that on your vinyl, go ahead and do so. So I'm gonna stitch here. Forward, back, forward, back. We want that to be nice and tight. It's part of what's gonna hold the bag together, or the strap on. Then we take our connector, thread it through, and then push it down. Now you don't have to use rectangle connectors. You can also use um, O-rings, uh, make sure you put them in when stitching is down so that there's enough space to get in there. So you could use gate rings, you could use O-rings, you can use these ones. Then I'm just going to stitch through ow, all the layers. So I've got both layers of this and then I'm going to stitch down the top. Now if your machine can't handle how many layers you've got going because of the fabric, you can also instead put a rivet or two rivets to hold everything down. I'm feeling fairly confident that my machine will stitch this. If it doesn't, we're going to have a problem. Uh, but you will notice I am not back stitching because I don't trust my machine lately. It's been naughty. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it has been. So now we just repeat that step. So the join, I forgot to mention. So that's where the join is. You want that facing up when we put it in. Fold it in half, make a good crease there. You don't have to put the D-ring on, although sometimes it does help. Thicker ones take up more space, so you won't want to have it as high. But the reason we do half is if you are going to rivet these, you want to be able to get both layers. You don't want one really long and then one really short. So, food for thought on that. Make sure that it is sitting straight up and not weirdly on an angle. The interfacing that I've added to these is also going to help carry the weight of the bag. Thread it on, push the rest into the hole. This reminds me of Harlot. Now I want to make a Harlot. Push it down and then stitch in place. Backstitching always makes me nervous on this machine. I don't know why. I think it broke a needle once and now I've got like this minor trauma from it. Nothing major, just go slowly. So there we go, we've now got our strap connectors on. Oh wait, 
fold it in half, crease it. If you don't do this, you will find that you will have one really long bit and one really short bit. So if you wanted to add rivets, it's going to make it slightly more tricky. Just so you know. So again, we're going to stitch, back stitch. back and forth several times. Now all of those went into exactly the same holes. So if you're worried about over perforating, as long as you do it slowly and steadily, you'll actually go through the same hole each time. It's just making it more stable. Push it into the hole, down. So see, they're still not even, but they're closer to even than if one was super long. You basically want to bring this down so that your ring can't move around too much. I don't like mine when they move. I think they should be where they're told to be. Oh, and I've just run out of bobbin. I heard that. I don't know if I'll get through the next one. Let's have a look. Oh no, it just tricked me. It sounded like it was empty. What we're doing, I was going to do the handles next, but need a new bobbin for that. This one's nearly empty. All right, so again, crease, shove it in the hole. You don't even have to be gentle. In fact, you shouldn't be gentle. If you have to be gentle to do it, something's probably going to break once you put weight in your bag. Always be a bit rough. I promise it won't hurt it. Stitch, back stitch. Again, you want to make sure that you're not uh, missing the back bit of fabric. Like, you don't want to be stitching in the hole. You want to be above the hole. On we go. Force it in. I also didn't necessarily have to top stitch this because it's all going to stay in place. I just think it's pretty. And it's a good practice to have. Feeling slightly more confident about my back stitching at the moment, apparently. Chop up all the tails. And there you go. These you should be able to like reef on and nothing comes off. So now we're gonna take, I don't know why I swapped that, it actually doesn't matter, they are identical. We're gonna swap this. Right, and see here, we're just gonna fold that over with the seam allowance and then line it up and then bob your uncle. Right, and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to clip it to the outside. So what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to cut that off actually is what I'm going to do. I don't need it there forever. I've reached the point that is time to come off. They are helpful in lining up the pattern though, so please do still do them. Just don't feel bad if you're going to then cut them off. So I'm lining up the edge with the edge of the fabric. Um, you can also, if you want to, fold this in half and find the center because we all know how I feel about centers of things. Love them. And we just happen to have done that other one earlier. So the center and the center should line up. bag so far. Right, so we also want to make sure that this end is folded over and you want to make sure it's not like overly folded so that it kind of tapers weirdly at the end. I also want to chop off this chunk now that we're here. Now it looks awkward. I'm probably just making it look awkward. Chop! I did just squish my finger. That did kind of hurt. Okay. Now the reason I am tacking all of this down is because I don't want it to shift and I don't want it to go crooked because I hate unpicking. And this is going to prevent that problem. 
So you can stitch the outside first and then this inner rim if you prefer. Uh, if the clips are in your way and annoying you, stitch the outside so it stays in place and then you can do the inner rim. I personally prefer to work inner to outer, but again, personal preference. Now, I am going to stop and change bobbins because I can see the metal, which means there's stuff all left, and then we're going to continue. Okay, fresh bobbin is ready, so I'm going to start up here, and I'm just going to top stitch. I am on three and three quarters, which is a good top stitching length for me. I could have gone all the way up to four if I wanted to. And I'm top stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge of the join. Slow and steady makes for beautiful curves, by the way. Rather than starting and stopping, if you can find a nice slow pace and just keep it going, you will get a beautiful curve every time. Like that. Ta da! Looks fabulous. Now, across the end, I have to move this. Things are about to get a bit hectic. Now, to make my life easier, I could go back the other way, but I'm actually just going to stop, take it off, and start again from that outer edge because I don't want to fight with it being in my throat. Would it have potentially been quicker to just go the other way? Actually, probably not, because by the time I fit it with it, this way would have been quicker. reason we stitch that is because it'll be easier to, to make the bag later. But how cool does that look? I really like it. I don't know about you, but that's a very clever design. <sighs> She's so clever with things like that. That looks amazing. Alright, let's go on to our lining. So, actually no, actually, I lied. Let's do our straps because I've got a full bobbin and that will look cool. Now thicker straps are always trickier to find the center. Um, so if you struggle, use a ruler. Don't be ashamed to have to use a ruler. Nothing wrong with it. On really thick ones, I made a two inch strap the other day. Um, if you're in my Facebook group, you would have seen the prettiness, which was, uh, it was black and orange with like cool looking stitching. I did a photo. Um, so it was a four inch piece that I had to fold over to a two inch piece, which is what I'm going to do here. And it is much, much easier to do that with a line in the middle because I can't eyeball the center of that much as well. And that's probably just a practice thing and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. And then we just put our tape over the line. Oh, this is rippable. I need to just... So this double-sided tape is from uh, the Ghana Sewing Room. It is awesome because you can tear it. Uh -oh. I'm just so used to snipping it that my brain hasn't quite caught up. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a gap between these two sides. So I'm not actually putting this all the way up to the line. I could, it is thin vinyl, but if you're doing thicker vinyl, this is a really cool little trick. So, move that one out of the way. I want a tiny, tiny gap in the middle. And I will show it up close in a second. We don't need much not even a quarter of an inch right just a little bit so when you've got thick vinyl and you fold this over it will sit beautifully flat for you every time just leave a bit of a gap then we line up the edges always do the open edge first
Now the reason I'm doing a double fold is because of the type of vinyl it is. Um, but some people just really don't like raw edges and that's fine. You can do this with thicker vinyl. But also because this is thinner vinyl, I am going to stop back stitch and instead of going back the other way, we're going to bring this up and we're going to go top to bottom again so that we don't get that weird twist in it because I don't want that. It won't look pretty. lovely and flat. Let's do the other one. Oops, I just hit the camera with that. I apologize. So off. Tiniest of gaps. Now the thicker your stuff, the slightly bigger the gap needs to be, but again, it won't ever need to be huge. Flip it. Squish it. Also try not to uh, stretch your vinyl. Like I'm using my hands to just kind of roll it over and push it. You don't want it to be stretched. Okay, so again, open side first, stitch, back stitch. And you'll find, you should find the edge matches up a lot easier. I say should because, you know, there's always complications on something. This is the zipper pocket top. Oops, I just threw that in the bin. How's that for a weird habit? Right, put it over there. Zipper pocket facing. So this one's the facing. Grab a ruler and a pen. Now I'm just gonna do it from here. We need to draw a line like so. And then, so this ruler is wider than one inch. So that middle line is actually not half an inch. So we don't use that line for lining things up. Just so you know, but I'm looking like I'm doing crazy things. It's the width of a zipper. That was a deliberate choice, by the way, for anyone wondering. Okie dokie. Oops. Just dropped everything. So we're going to take the lining piece. I have interfaced the lining, but not all the pieces that we're going to attach to the lining. Again, I don't want too much weight happening in the bag. So this should be pretty because it's checkers. It's pretty easy to line up. I say pretty easy because you know. Nope. Right. Find the center, mainly because then I can line that center up with that center. And ta-da! It's in the middle. Center is honestly the easiest way to measure stuff. So we're going to stitch the two long edges. I'm going to need to iron this too because of the type of fabric it is. If you were using waterproof canvas, you wouldn't need to iron it. You could just finger press it and fold it. Trim all 
of that off. Grab some scissors, fold it. I like to fold it evenly here because then when you do this, the line goes in the middle and is less likely to be kind of a pointy, weird shape is what I have found. So when we get to about three quarters of an inch to a full inch from the end, we are going to triangle out those corners because it's the easiest thing to do. One and two. All right, so we need to go and push this through the hole and iron it down. All right, so it's all ironed lovely and flat. We need to take our zipper, which is the width of your pocket pieces. And I'm gonna, actually, I don't need to do that yet. We're not gonna put that on yet because it's always easier to sew without it. So I'm going to lay this right sides down, uh, right sides up, zipper right sides up, and I'm just gonna stitch along the edge. Trim off those tails, and then we're gonna do the same to this edge. Now, you may or may not need to orient your fabric. Oh, come on, machine. Don't start with me. I promise you the mush machine has bad sewing days. So we're just going to have them like so. And then I'm going to put the zipper on. And I want mine closing to the left. So you want this piece up. Store your zipper and then I'm just going to place this over the top of the hole like so. Now I'm going to roll this up so that it fits without hitting anything because I don't want it to distort my stitches and then I just with my fingernails maneuver the zipper so it's in the middle of the space. Um, you could even double sided take this down if that's what you would prefer. You don't have to back stitch there as we are going to make it the whole way around. Your fabrics aren't kind of maneuvering in the way. And backstitch. Trim that off. I have also just seen that I missed my zipper. Uh, so this is going to be slightly more tricky to fix now, but it can be done. I'm just going to fold all of that back and then stitch here. Line up the lining along everything. It can be done, it's just tricky, that's why we don't make it this way. Ta da! Problem solved. There is always ways to fix things. So now I don't have the raw edge there. So I'm going to take the bottom and against the top here, we're just going to stitch that together. Stitch, back stitch. And then we can stitch down the sides. Now if you're not adding the other pocket as well, you will need to hit, uh, open up the bottom of this so that you can turn your bag through. One needs to be open, one can stay closed. So that's just something to think about. I'm going to put it in the welt pocket because why not? But I'm not contending with a zipper. I like that idea. Trim off as many tails as you can find. And so now you have your zipper pocket done. So you just want to make sure. Now if you're not going to do a second pocket, 
open up the bottom of this so that we can turn the bag through. I am today because I can. That's pretty much why. So, other lining piece. Again, we're going to want to find the center. The pattern is written so that your pocket pieces and your facing pieces were all using the same ones, so that's nice. You just had to cut two of these and two of the facings. All right, but before we get to that, because I wanted, I need to do some ironing again. I know there's a lot of stops, but bear with me on this. Well, these are the welt pieces, so we're going to put these together like this. And then we're going to find the center. So I'm just going to finger press it because it's the easiest way. And then you're going to come in and the measurement is in the pattern and we're just going to stitch here and the other end. We want to do it at that center point. So this just joins them all together. And then we fold this back at that center point. And we're going to iron that. And then you're going to fold the other side back so that it looks like this with a gap. Does that make sense? So we'll, we'll go back and I'll just do it again. We stitched here in the middle. See my little crease? Then we're just going to fold one side down and then this piece up so that you technically have a beautiful little gap. So that is important. So that will need to be ironed nice and flat and glorious. So we'll pop that aside because we've got more ironing to do. I then need to take this bad boy and draw a rectangle. Um, I love my acrylic templates because they make my life easier. You don't need them to make this though. You can measure it like I did the other one. I'm doing exactly the same thing, except one's quicker. But I like to show options. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to own all the gadgets I own. I just love gadgets. What can I say? All right. So we're going to take this, we're going to line it up in the middle. So again, middle to middle, happy days. And again, I'm just going to sew the long lines. We don't do the little corner ones because they're too hard to press out nicely. I don't interface these pieces, but you can if you want to. I personally just feel it's a bit of a waste. But. If you're not confident or if you're using like stretchier fabric or like a really flimsy cotton and you want to interface it, you can. I'm not the boss of you. You know your fabric better than I do. Some quilting cotton you get, it's like really weird and stretchy. It requires um, interfacing. This one, however, is nice and stable, so I'm pretty okay. So we're going to go in the center, trim it out towards the edge, triangle out those corners. Whoops, I just dropped the pockety bit on the floor, but that's okay. Do with that in a minute. And triangle that out. So now I also need to go and iron this, and I'm going to go and iron my welts so that they are nice and crisp and ironed, I guess. Right, so we are ironed nice and open. And this is ironed flat and even, but there is a gap. I think it's like it can talk to you. Now these always look the coolest when you do them in a contrasting color. Um, but I've only just thought of it now. So there you go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this, and again, you want this open. So in, just as a little side note, in tailored suits, what they actually do is stitch all the way across so they they stitched like i did and then all across here they'll do like a nice big open stitch uh, that we later pull out to make sure that it stays closed and perfectly even so just a side note and then we lay this over the top now i think i do my welt pockets different to the pattern 
um, and that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm going to make sure it's all nice and even, and then you can just stitch around it like we do um, this one. So I'm going to make a match. There's several different ways you can do this. I'm just going to stitch around this, um, but you can also, and I've seen very cool welt pockets, you can just stitch here and then here, and then you wouldn't see the stitching. In fact, let's, let's do that. So what we can do is we lay this perfectly where it needs to be, and then we just pull this. So this is why it's always joined, right? Pull this back and stitch this to here, like this. This is just a fun little side note. You obviously don't have to make it like this. It's just cool if we do, and I want to, right? So that is now stitched to there. So that being the facing, and then this being the welt piece, right? So that's now technically attached. And then we fold this one back. In a perfect world, you want to try and actually get pretty close to the stitching. And then it'll just all look like one piece, right? So I'm stitching over everything there. And so from the outside now, look at that. How cool is that? There is no stitching. It kind of looks like it's floating a little bit. So I might actually come back and stitch this one closer too, since I'm on a roll. And then, so this is how I was taught to do welds, just so you know. So now they're, they're attached, right? So it's this cool little thing. And again, you usually do them in an opposite color. And then just to make sure that they stay right here, I'm gonna stitch in the ditch next to and onto the weld pieces. So just in here, we're gonna stitch, back stitch. It's just like a little bit um, in thin thread. It's basically invisible but it just stops the welt from opening up anymore. There, stitch, back stitch. Now obviously this is a bit more fiddly than the way the pattern's written, um, but we are still doing a welt pocket, so it totally still counts. And then normally you would then unpick that gap and voila, welt pocket. So then we're just gonna take this piece and join it to the top and the bottom of the welt piece. keep saying the word welds a lot, it's starting to lose all meaning, but anyway. I'm going to stitch it here, and then I'm going to trim off this excess fabric, um, because the top of the welt doesn't necessarily need that much extra, unless you want the pocket to be able to go up as well as down, but that's not very important to these kind of pockets, so now the pocket just kind of ends just above the welt. And then this I will join to the edge here, so match up the edges. Now again, there's three different ways you can do this. You can do the way in the pattern, you could stitch around it like one of these, or you could do it my way. It's the beauty of sewing it yourself, you can make it up as you go. So I'm going to lay this down, and then I'm going to pull this, actually I'm going to pull this up. And I want to be able to turn my bag through here, so I'm going to take some scissors and chop it in half, like so. Now I can stitch the sides together. So I want to go through all the layers, the facing, the well, the pocket part, the little triangle from the, the corners here. You want to kind of just stitch it all together. I forgot how much I like well pockets. Fabulous. They look really cool when you do them in a, like a contrasting colour, which again, I probably should have thought about, and I very clearly didn't until right now. Alright, trim off those tails, and then this will be open, and we don't need to worry about opening the zipper, it's already done. How cool does that look? I think it looks cool. 
again. I forgot I was obsessed with welt pockets for a very long time. Okay, let's do our zipper. Now this is like a really cool pattern piece that I can show you because it doesn't have measurements. Oh. Um, but it's it's all of it and you, you cut it all at once and then you just chop it down the middle. Um, and then you get this. So they're not straight. They've got like a bit of a thing going on. One edge is straight and one edge isn't. And it's just very cool. Anyway, I'm gonna take a zip now I'm going to singe the ends because they're having a moment. And then we're just going to pull the zipper out and kink it down at a right angle and I'm just going to tack it in place. And you want to tack it close to the edge of the zipper. I heard that. Stop it. Always misbehaving. Then we're going to do the same to the other side. And you want to try and match it so it's even. Even, Steven. And stitch and back stitch. Trim off the tails. So now we've got this. So the, the flat edge is where we're gonna put the zipper. But before we do that, I wanna get some double-sided tape because it's my friend. And I'm gonna put a little bit on the ends because we tuck the ends in. All right, so I'm gonna tuck the ends in. And it is on the pattern piece. Um, so it shows you how much because it's discolored. It's very clever. So you can measure it, you can eyeball it, you can whatever. Oh, did it crooked already? Look at me go. Other end. This is rippable ta um, tape, but for such small things, I like precision, so I will still clip it. Right, then when we fold it in half, this is what's going to happen, see? So the half should be at the pointy bit, but also just fold it and crease it with your finger. And then it says to use double sided tape. Mm -mm. Where's my skinnier one? There it is. Right, super skinny. So this is an eighth of an inch. So I just want to go right on that edge there. So you won't see this tape later, but it's going to hold it in place. Alright, peel off the backing. Put on the, hold on, let me do this right. there. So this bit's the lining and then this bit's the exterior. Do you see where we're going with that? He said, I think I've done it wrong. My brain's having a moment, isn't it? Because if we do it that way, we're not going to have a zipper. Do it this way. Pull this over. That's better. See, my brain was just having a moment. So, I'm going to add clips as well because, well, we've only put sticky tape on one side and I just want to check myself, right? So then when I stitch that and pull it back, see, that makes more sense now. That was a close one. So I'm just going to stitch from the fabric and then back stitch to lock it all in. And then we're going to stitch all the way up and back stitch. So clever. Then we flip it over. Right? And look at that. Ha -ha.
I love the way some people's brains work. My brain would never have come up with that. That is so cool. So I'm now matching the edges, like so. Right, and then we're gonna top stitch the whole way around and then we'll do the other side. Now I'm going to start here and I'm gonna do the edge with the clips first, just so that they're out of my way. And I can get a nice top stitch really. Needle down, pivot. Down we go. Remembering there is double sided tape in here. And you absolutely need to remember to stitch this end close. Oh, that's awesome. See, new techniques. Love it. Makes me happy. I know I'm weird. Leave me to it. So now I need to. Where's the end? Oh my gosh, I'm blind. There it is. So another thing we could do is actually put double sided tape the whole way along. Because I'm about to have to think about which side I was going to have to put it on. Whereas this eliminates that problem. Oh, and I haven't tucked under the raw edges yet. Whoops. So let's do that too. We can't have raw edges poking out. That would be rude. So, double sided tape. So this is half inch and the other one's an eighth of an inch. Put things back and away, keep my workspace clean-ish. I say ish because, you know, there is forever clips lying around. One side. Other side. Like that. And then I am just going to pull off the double sided tape. And then we have to think, right? So I need the edge and I need it to be into it. So we need this edge there to stick down the tape. No, nope, I missed. Right, so now that I know what side, we also want to make sure that these ends are going to match up. So that is to there, like so. And then stick that down, and then we can pull this over, line up this edge with all the other edges, like that, stick it down, Voila! Double sided tape to the rescue. Love it. So now we're just going to start here on this edge again. Stitch, back stitch to lock it in. And then just stitch down. Oh, I'm so excited. I love this. I get excited when I find out new stuff too. Just as much as you guys, I promise. Right, pull back the edges. Line up the raw edges, and again, you should have made sure that that bit lines up and we should be good to go. More clips. Always more clips. Pull it back. You can iron it as well if you wanted to. I'm just gonna clip it. Um, depending on if you use vinyl or fabric. And I did um, interface this with a woven medium because I thought that was a good idea. And I'm going to do the clip edge first again so that they're out of my way and also because then that edge is definitely joined. It's like doing the open end of a um, strap. Like, oh, I've run out of bobbin. See, that was lucky. Had I done it the other way, it would have been in my nice top stitching area. All right, let me stop and get a bobbin. Okay, new bobbin is done, so I'm just going to pick up where I left off because we don't see these stitches, and that is fine. Pivot. Cross the end. 
pivot up the side. Across the end. Backstitch. Out of habit. You won't see it anyway. Uh, that was stuck. So if you ever find that you've kind of stitched through your thread, like I seem to do constantly, if you clip it really close to where it is, the other side will just pull out. Just so you all know. Okay, let's grab a lining piece. No, I want the one with the zipper. Because I always like my zippers to go the same way. It's a personal thing, I'm cool with it. So I'm gonna fold it in half, find the center of both halves. Now, I don't plan on putting my zipper pull or the zipper end on. What I'm going to do is separate them. I know that freaks some people out, but I'm cool with it. So, we're going to clip it right sides up to your lining, or you could clip it right sides down to your exterior. Choice is yours. I like to do what I like to do. And then we're going to do the same to the other one. Center, center, nope, that was close. Zipper was upside down. Okay, happy days. Now, let's, okay, so I'm gonna pull this back multiple ways my brain's like oh I could build this several ways from here but let's just do it the normal way I feel like we've had enough new learning experiences for one video right right sides together stitching around the edge now if you want to you can add clips I'm gonna braid it hold stuff where it needs to be without issue. Um, linings anyway. Exteriors with foam and stuff are not this easy to manipulate. In which case clip it please. Please don't let me teach you too many bad habits. Um, now if you want to you could add fusible fleece or foam. I actually think this is going to be just fine the way it is. And because it's an exterior and therefore heavier, I'm going to clip it. And I'm actually going to clip it so that the pocket half is face up, um, so that it's not distorting the shape of the bag too much. If it was underneath, um, it's going to distort the top piece more than when it's on top. So, food for thought there. And I mean, it would probably make a very minimal difference, but difference is still difference. What have I done? How have I clipped it wrong? I mean, it happens, but still. Oh, there it is. See, this is why we clip the exterior. It's never just straightforward. We always start. I started from the edges, worked my way down. So with this side up, we are now going to stitch, back stitch. Again, try and do it all in one go, so don't go faster than you can manage. You always get a nicer curve if you do it that way. I think, anyway. Clips in the bowl. Zigzag scissors to the rescue. Now, because of the way the pattern's written, this should not be overly thick. Theoretically, my scissors are going to do just fine. Because we're not, we're not cutting through six layers of pockets. I like it. Sorry, my brain's talking out loud again. Okay. Exterior.
area done. Lining done. Turn this one right sides out. And then you want to think about which way your zipper is going to close. So I'm going to put the front, this is my front piece here, and I want my front zipper to close here. So I'm going to take the front side and I'm going to put it in this way. Then I'm going to line up that side seam with a clip and then the opposite side seam with a clip and then pretty much all the clips from the zipper should just attach everything together although they are all facing the wrong way. These things happen. So just flip them around, clip them in. And it should all fit lovely. If you're finding that it's not fitting as well as you'd hoped, uh, whichever one is bigger, come and do a little bit, like an eighth of an inch, bring the seam in. Simplest way to fix those problems. I don't think I've ever told you that before. But if you've made a lining and you're getting it in like this and you find that there's a, just a big gapy bit um, and no ma a matter of like adjusting can fix it, just take out the lining and stitch an eighth of an inch in from the last seam and you'll probably find it fits better. Right, we're all good. Mine fits. Not that I expected it not to, but just the thought. It has happened to me before. I was clearly not paying enough attention when I did seam allowances and it gave me grief. So that is how you fix it. So I'm going to start just off centre, it doesn't really matter where you start and finish for this, you just pick a spot, any spot. I actually don't like to start on seams, because um, they're thicker and annoying. Literally why I don't like doing it, but each their own. You can start on a seam if you want. can see, of which I can see many. It's not attached to. Don't know. Trim it off. Then, into our, not that one, the open one is what I'm after. Oh look, I stitched it into the seam. I do this a lot. You just take, it's usually always the, um, like, selvage part of your pocket you just cut it off it's not going to damage anything easiest way to solve it grab the bottom pinch it make it talk like a poppet i promise birthing bags is way more fun when you make them poppets way more entertaining for your day off camera mine usually say things but we don't need to show me like completely crazy once you've got it all in the lining of the pocket, it should just pull out magically. And then I'm gonna get my turning stick because I love this thing. This end in, push against all the seams. Look at it go. Oh, turning stick for the win. Love this thing. Right, then we are going to tuck in the raw edges of our pocket, which is the wealth pocket, or you could have done the zipper pocket, it doesn't matter really. Dealer's choice and all that jazz. Get that tail out of the way. Back stitch, forward stitch. Doesn't sound as cool as back stitch. Back stitch. Tails off, random thread also in the bin. Tuck your lining into the pocket first. And then tuck the lining into the bag. Oh, how cool is that? Um, 
Ugh, my brain's going wild. So other things you could do to this bag to have like more pockets and add-ons. Zipper pocket on the back. Or a welt pocket on the back. I am going to squish this seam. I know it's all just fabric, but crazy amount of difference when I do. So, and I'm just obsessed with my pliers. I don't even stock them. I'm just obsessed. That's why they keep popping up. I got mine from eBay. They are leather working pliers. I typed in leather work pliers and up they pop. Okay. Take these zips off if they're in your way now. And then I'm just going to top stitch around the bag. You don't have to, you can just leave it as is. Um, but I want to, so let's do that. So we need to go up to a top stitching length. I'm going to start off to the side, not directly in the center, that would potentially be weird. And I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch. I'm also going to make sure that these are all down so I do not stitch them and snap a needle. We're on a roll. I don't need to be doing those things. This is quite easy to top stitch around. I love that. Again, make sure your connectors are down. Or if you've used gate rings, maybe just take them off would be an easier solution for that. I know I would if I hadn't used them. Then when we get back to the start, I'm going to do one, two, back stitch, forward stitch. Lock them all in, Eddie. For those that don't know, lock it in, Eddie is a very Australian thing to say from a show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Every time I say lock it in, my brain says Eddie. Just a thing. Like if I said yippee ki -yay, I imagine you all know the next bit to that. Zipper on. Ta-da! Now, if you don't want your zipper as long, you can just kind of cut it off. I'm thinking I might, because we don't need it that long. I'm going to cut it off to about here. But you can also have like a fun tail if that's what you want. I don't need a huge tail. Then I'm going to take my zipper end. I'm going to fold these down into a triangle. I'm going to literally shove the zipper end on in as far as it can physically go. Electronic screwdriver, you don't have to use an electronic one. You can just use a normal mini one. You can get like a pack of mini screwdrivers from Bunnings for like four bucks. This one was 30 and I regret nothing. Love this thing. Although as you can see, the batteries are flat, which means my child's been playing with it again. He loves it. Opens all these toys. Okay, so now we just need to add our handles. <sighs> punch a hole. Then punch another hole. I always like to put them around. Now normally I would use my zipper uh, my rivet strap uh, placements, but I sold them. So I need to order more. And until I do, this is my solution. So I've worked out one, I've now stabbed two, and then if we flip these to the opposite ends, you just line them up and go again. It's not as awesome as rivet placement templates. But it is a solution until I order new ones, which will probably be this weekend. Should really get on to that. Okay. Boom. Now I need rivets and the rivet press. Again, one day soon I am going to repaint mine. So I want my ends to be on the inside like this. So I'm going to put the post through, the cap on, and then whichever way is easier to get to, we lay it in and squish it. And the same with the other side. So I always, every single time I do a strap, I straighten it out and then pivot it around just so I don't get um, any twists because when I first made bags, 
clearly I made mistakes and I had twisty handles. So I now do that for literally every stripe ever to make sure that I oh, squish it down, other side. now is I'm making sure that where the open part was is the same on both sides. So it doesn't matter if it's in or out, what it really matters is if it's the same. Consistency is key. You can do it always inside, you can do it always outside, as long as, or you can just make it up as you go. You put the first one in and then work it out later. So long as both are the same, it's all that really, that really matters. In we go over, poke it in, down, on, and squish. Move that out of the way. And that is our bag done. How cute is that? So the accents for the vinyl, I think, just set it off. And then we've got a lot of fun stuff and it's a cute little shoulder bag. You can also, if you want to, make a shoulder strap and then you would just um, clip it onto this one and that one. Um, so that's an option as well. Oh. But I think that come out splendid. All right, guys, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.